One of the biggest challenges of space flight and spacecraft in general is safety for the astronauts. And part of the challenge is devising a means to allow the crew to escape from a launch vehicle that is on the launch pad. For example, a fire breaking out during the launch sequence. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. When astronauts are actually inside the cockpit of their space capsule and something goes awry during the launch sequence once the engine is running, the crew can activate the launch escape system, and this can also be used in the rocket's ascent. The crew compartment is flown off the main rocket in a similar manner to ejection from a jet, and the compartment then floats down to Earth by parachute. Such escape systems have been standard on US, Soviet and Chinese rockets since the late 1960s, and also on the later Crew Dragon, Starliner and New Shepard spacecraft. The Space Shuttle, however, didn't have this system, and the crew were expected, if the vehicle was in a controlled glide, to egress via a hatch wearing special parachutes. A backup system also existed for the evacuation of spacecraft crew when the rocket was still on the launch pad, and this became particularly important as the Space Shuttle had no other system for allowing astronauts to escape quickly. So what was this ingenious system? It involved a zip line from the launch tower to a concrete bunker 1,200 feet away, the zip line reaching speeds of 55 miles per hour. This system was part of the Kennedy Space Center. Basically, the astronauts jump into special chairs and launch themselves down a zip line, giving them a chance to avoid whatever calamity has overtaken the rocket and the launch tower. However, the concrete bunker 1,200 feet from the tower is only stage two of the system to save the lives of the astronauts, and remaining in the vicinity of the bunker would be too unsafe in the event of a catastrophic explosion or massive fire. So here, NASA had waiting part of its armored core. Yes, you did hear me correctly. NASA had a core of tracked military armored vehicles that were part of the tower escape system for astronauts. How many vehicles? Four in all, all M113 armored personnel carriers. The M113 first entered US Army service in 1960 and is still in service all over the world. It weighs about 12 tons, had a crew of two, and could carry between 12 and 15 passengers. It has seen extensive combat use in the Vietnam War, in the Panama invasion and in the first Gulf War, and appears in a multitude of different variants. The United States alone has used some 5,000 M113s. Four M113s were dedicated to NASA crew rescue and firefighter transportation. During a launch, vehicles 1 and 2 were parked just under a mile from the pad. The firefighters that these vehicles carried were the closest humans, apart from the astronauts, to the spacecraft during the launch. A third vehicle was positioned beside the evacuation bunker at the end of the zip wire. This vehicle had no crew. The astronauts would have to drive this M113 themselves, and all NASA astronauts completed a course in armored personnel carrier driving, which apparently they thoroughly enjoyed. Vehicles 1 and 2 were each fully crewed with firefighters, wearing special silver fire retardant suits, and with breathing apparatus on. 
If an emergency was declared, vehicles 1 and 2 would drive towards the astronaut's bunker, with an allowance of only 10 minutes to reach the launch site, perform whatever tasks were required to help save the astronauts, get back into the two APCs, and get away again. In the meantime, the astronauts would enter Vehicle 3 and start to drive to safety. The two APCs crammed with firefighters driving into the emergency area were probably a backup in case the astronaut's APC was in some way compromised or due to the fire at the launch pad being so intense that they were trapped inside their bunker and so on. A fourth vehicle was kept as a spare. The M113 was chosen due to its ability to withstand punishment, this type of vehicle first being used during the Apollo moon program. They were coated in flame retardant paint and later had a luminous paint coating, with the vehicle's number prominently displayed all round. The vehicles were completely sealed, making them invulnerable to fire, having their own oxygen supply on board, and being tracked could crunch over debris without problems. Later, NASA added a fifth M113 to its fleet, a variant called the M577A3 Armoured Command Post Vehicle, this being a longer version without weapon mounts. NASA used this vehicle for hazardous materials response, able to deal with incidents involving toxic, radioactive or other dangerous substances. A robotic arm was later fitted as well. At the vehicle's rear, suit ports were added, special hatches onto which safety suits could be mounted. Crew members could enter directly into the suits from inside the vehicle, which then detached to allow them to work. In 2013, NASA retired its entire fleet, replacing them with the much larger and more heavily armoured Cayman mine-resistant ambush-protected trucks. It is a testament to NASA's safety record that, in over 30 years of use, the M113s were never actually used for real. However, a modernized version of the Zipline escape system and its bunker are still in use today, and of course the Cayman MRAPs still perform the task of the older M113s. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.